Hey everybody, it's the Last Plan Echoes from Wellness Insider, and right now I got with me the LG Optimus 4X HD. Long name for a good damn reason. We're gonna go over with you the hardware, software, specifications of the phone, how long it takes to turn on, a sunlight test, we'll go through some gaming, see how that looks, I'll give you an idea of how the phone works, as well as some really cool customizability on this guy. I never would have seen that happen. It's so cool, we'll go over there. Just one second, stick around, you'll see. And at the end, we'll summarize with a breakdown of if this phone is right for you, is it, is it not, we'll see exactly what's up with it. In the meantime, let's start off with the hardware. The front, we have a 4.7 inch display. You see that? That's Gorilla Glass. Awesome. Uh, it's at 1280 by 720 pixels, which is nice. So that's a big, nice, deep resolution with 312 pixels per inch pixel density. So you totally have some nice resolution in there. It's got a quad core 1.5 gigahertz processor and it's running Nvidia's Tegra 3 graphics processing. So it's going to be very nice for video gaming. Um, I wish I had my hands on some Tegra videos or Tegra video games, but you can throw whatever you want on it. It's going to be awesome. Yes, uh, it has one gigabyte of RAM, uh, 16 gigs of internal memory, totally expandable up to 64 gigs using a micro SD memory card, a megapixel camera is on the back and in the front, well, with flash, of course, not a focus. In the front, we have a 1.3 megapixel camera. So in the front right away, there's three capacitive touch buttons, uh, kind of visible here, but again, they are illuminated when you turn the phone on. Uh, look at the top, we have a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera, which we mentioned, a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. On the right, there's nothing except for this really cool checkered design that runs the entire length of the phone. If you take a look here, it's beveled. So it's like a little pit here. So when you're holding this down with your thumb, it feels awesome. And uh, you won't have to worry about pressing the power button because that's at the top. So this feels really nice in your hand. And if you're left-handed too, it feels great. On the left, we have volume up and volume down. At the bottom, you have a micro USB charger. And the speaker is here for music and your ringtones. It has a little nub on it, if you can see that. So that if you put it on the table, theoretically, it won't obstruct it that much. I didn't really notice much of a difference, but again, that's the speaker. If you pop the back off, we have kind of generous 2150 milliamp hour battery. It would be nice to have 3000, but you know, this is the best they could do for this size and it is a fairly thin phone. Uh, that's where the SIM card goes and micro SD memory goes there. And you have this warning and guess what it says? Yes, this is the NFC transmitter and receiver, which is really cool because it's so bloody thin. I don't know how they fit it there, but there you have it. And uh, yeah, don't, don't scratch it. <laughs> so here we go. So let's put this guy back on. It's all plastic as you imagine. It's traditional with LG and Samsung most of the time, if not all. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and go through the software now. Um, this guy turning on, it turned on in about 44 seconds, which isn't that bad. It's right there with the Lumia 620, just a bit over uh, the Lumia 920 and um, Galaxy S3. Uh, but you know what, it's totally awesome. So yeah, 44 seconds, it's not that bad for if I want to turn on after a cold start with the battery being put in. Cool, so we're created right away with the user interface. This is running Jelly Bean Sandwich. Will it be upgraded down the road to something else? Who knows? Right now, this is what we've got. Um, so it's running Jelly Bean, sorry, and uh, Optimus user interface version three. So despite it running Android, uh, LG and Samsung will always throw their own software on top of it. In this case, this is the Optimus user interface. Optimus, that's what I said. So if we take a look at it, it's nice and clean and one Oh, I just want to show you the customizations, but we'll take our time there. Uh, if you take a look at the bottom, you see the little guide there showing you what home screen you're at. If you pinch to zoom, it totally shows you all your home screens. And if you pinch to zoom when you're on a home screen, it hides them so you can adore your wallpaper. Also, it'd be very sneaky with your, your friends and you make them think you broke your phone, but you didn't. You just have to pinch to zoom in and out and then you can get to all your home screens. You can totally customize them and remove them as necessary. So yeah, so let's get out of here. Uh, multitasking is done by holding down the home button, shows you what's running. Uh, let's go ahead and open something to give you an example of how that works. Play Store, sure. And this is a good test of how quickly things open. Camera launched, camera gone. Calendar launch, gone. Click and hold. Yeah, well, we have four processors in here in a gigafram, so it's gonna take a hell of a lot more than that to slow it down. But it gives an idea of how it works. You can remove these running items by swooping left or right, and then pff, you're back to the home screen. So cool. All right, so going back home to screen to screen, let's see the performance. I mean, come on guys, this is a really powerful phone. I don't expect uh, anything to really slow it down at this point, not with these specs, but it's cool. It's small things that go a long way. Like even when you hit the last part of a home screen, it stretches whatever's there to let you know, yeah, Dude, you, you totally hit the last part of the home screen. So you don't feel like you're going in circles. You click uh, click the apps button. It gives you a dump of everything you've downloaded. Uh, anything I've downloaded recently showed up at the end. So it's easy to say that, you know, applications will go to the end or if you go in downloads, it shows you what you have downloaded. So it's nice to organize it that way. So you don't get a mess of applications when you don't want to see all this stuff. Um, Bright white light. Don't know why they chose the white theme. Well, no, that's fine because you can always customize it. Uh, there's different ways to change that and how it looks. Let's go ahead and take a look at the dialer. Very bright lights, very white 
I don't know, I really wish they stuck with the dark theme, but they want to be different. They want to have their own little flavor on here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Obama. Yeah, context, very simple, loads quickly. One pit peeve of mine is how often you have to go back and forth. So let's go ahead and edit this contact. Very simple. You now you click a little icon here if you want to modify, very clean user interface. Uh, you can change the font size as well. Let's keep going back. Yeah, nice and fast, cool. So dial pads there, uh, calendar was pretty cool. Uh, simply used, much better than the stack, the stock Google Android keyboard, I'll tell you that. And uh, rotates pretty cool. You can customize how this looks. I just broke down to today's events, but you can totally change how that looks. And since we're here, I want you to see what happens when you go into email. I really appreciated this. Giving you more stuff that you may or may not need, but you can totally change the way it functions. So if you don't need it, you can disable it. There's your email. Okay, cool. Right? Right. This email is always here for some reason. Okay, so pinch the zoom. It's all right. It automatically just loads it to its native resolution, but you can always shrink it down. And yeah, it's not that bad. Watch what happens when you rotate it. Ah, you have your email list on the left and the email itself on the right. How you like that? You can totally click to drag this bar here to change the size of both bars and uh yeah a lot of people are going to like this looks like outlook but hopefully better <laughs> uh, you can turn this off if you don't want it but it's very nice to see that and let's see how quickly it rotates again there's the email there's the email let's see if it remembers how much you zoomed in in the email when you do that so we zoomed into the htc logo let's go back that's awesome. It remembers where you left off. It doesn't just jump to the corner like some, you know, moron. <laughs> it actually performs well. So look at that. So that's great for emails because, again, you probably will be using this for emails. That's kind of important. So, yeah, going through software, yeah. widgets. You know, there's two ways to get there. You can go to settings and widgets. That's fine. Or you can click at the home screen. You have a quick... Whoop. Okay, just added something. <laughs> just a quick uh, run through. So you have apps, downloads, widgets, and wallpapers. So you can change this to everything. Uh, let's go ahead and change the wallpaper to a live one, which means it's animated, just so we can try to tax. Not like it can really affect the performance. We'll try though, man. We'll try and see if we can slow it down then. So we get this cool animated interactive wallpaper. Let's go screen to screen. Not slowing down. Okay, well, we knew that wouldn't happen. Well, let's take a look at that customizability I was talking about because I keep flapping my lips. Let's go into apps. Eh, another way to do it is you swipe from the top. These are customizable as well. Everything's freaking customizable on this thing. Anywho, by default, quick menu, sound, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. You can totally change these shortcuts up here to whatever you use most often. So, bang, go back. You hit this little button here to get the settings. And, uh, yeah, let's go down to... Put this down so it's not jumping around. If we go to home screen, you can change the theme, first of all. This is, you know, that whole bright light I was talking about. It'll dub change things around. Right now, it's on Optimus. If we go to Biz... It shows you how the home screen would look, but they're nice enough to include what your application tray or list would look like. So in this case, it looks white, but it's actually a gray, like a metallic gray. So it shows you how both will look like, so you have an idea of how you want to customize it. Let's go to Marshmallow, and it shows you how it would look. Pretty cool. also changes how the icons look as well. If you take a look, Optimus, if you look at Contact, it's orange. If we go back to Biz, they've also changed their dark brown. Works more corporate, more conservative. So that's one level of customizability. Let's keep going. Animations, you can turn them on and off, fine. Screen swipe animation, for God's sake. I don't know why this is even an option, but it's great. So if we go here, you see how this goes left to right? Sliding, we call it breeze. If we go to the settings again, and we change that to accordion. Let's go home. See what it's doing? It's folding in two places now. Pretty cool. Okay, well, that's fine. Let's see what else. I mean, totally unnecessary, but totally awesome because you can make this as cool as you want. So carousel, yeah. You see it? Now it's swiping towards you. So you can customize this sucker any way you see, just like a book. Look at that. How cool is that? And another feature, I guess the most important one, not Angry Birds, <laughs> whoops, um, is, and I found it very irritating, the fact that I'm surprised, I'm glad they included this here. Um, no matter what option you choose, which I'll just change it back to, breeze scroll screen circularly if i choose that on before i choose that if i get to an end of a menu you remember that whole stretchy thingy how it just dies at the end because you have five home screens but it stops it doesn't loop if you go back here well you can guess because i'm talking about it it is smart enough to just let you keep going in circles so instead of stopping here at the end you loop back to the beginning and i think the screen dims a bit when that happens no no okay never mind 
Cool though, see? So you can totally customize anything you want. Use it any way you want to. That's a huge feature of this phone. That's what I really appreciate about it. And in any case, you wanna remove things, click, drag. Let's go to Angry Birds. Has a cool little animation, gets thrown away. So yeah, very nice and smooth. Throughout this entire time, there's an animated wallpaper too. I don't know, I didn't see any lag doing all that stuff. So yeah, and uh, in terms of how this display works in the sunlight, well, I did take it outside and uh, that dial pad did show up pretty bright. I was concerned initially because it is white and you know, when it comes to very bright light around it, sunlight in this case, it wouldn't show up, but I was pleasantly surprised at a huge freaking dial pad and you can easily see it in any level of light. It automatically bumps up the brightness uh, just so you can see that. And the contacts were easy to read as well. Again, totally can customize the size of that font. In this case, that you're back. Uh, this is the small size you can have. So you can fit about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven contacts on the home screen or on the, the contacts menu. Okay, cool, done. So let's go take a look at the camera quality. I did take a few pictures here. It's a tuny, Canadian currency. Not too bad, but that was a little reflective. So let's go ahead, and that's without flash. So with flash and a bright on a, um, a desk surface, I guess, and no flash, okay. Memory, everyone has it, and either you know about it or not. Quality was really good without flash, I have to say. You can see, look, you can read that. But look how far away I took the picture. So they're speaking for it. There's my keyboard, a little grimy, with flash and without. And uh, the camera itself, you can see how close I can get. Yeah, it's very nice. The camera itself has a cool feature. Oh, a lot of LG phones have this feature, and I like it a lot, um, is you have the ability to do something like this. So if I get my pen again, Cheese. I didn't press anything. <laughs> so it has that functionality. You could totally, by pressing this button, it says you could just say cheese and take a picture. So that's nice. Uh, I found it really cute. I think uh, also if I press the volume button down here, I think I'd take a picture. Yep. So instead of the volume buttons doing zoom in, zoom out, which you can do with your fingers, um, it actually acts as a shutter button, despite it being underneath. Uh, that's pretty cool. And of course it automatically rotates so you can take a picture any way you'd like. Uh, that was a nice feature too. And uh, speaking of the picture quality, let's see. Yeah, even that really quick photo, I mean, take a look. That is awesome. You could look at the tablecloth. Yeah, so I'm thoroughly impressed. The range on this was really good too. So camera was freaking awesome. Picture quality is awesome too. Okay, cool. So let's go into the web browser, do a real quick test there. It comes with a native browser. Um, I don't know if I should really test it because it comes with, comes with Chrome as well. I mean, sure. Oh, hey, look, there's, there's Wynn's website. It's a cell phone provider here in Canada. Although I don't know how much longer it'll be around. Um, that looks like HTML5 content. So let's zoom in. That's cool. Instead of it being choppy, it fades in the content. That's a way to make, <laughs> that makes all the difference in the world. So it looks, you know, wonderful. And even if it has a load, it fades instead of just being choppy or blocky. That is awesome. Okay, that's great to see. Rotate, it's good. Let's rotate again. Awesome, can't complain. All right, so that is that website. Let's try to use the same example. Well, you know what, Chrome is better by default. So if you could do it on this browser, you can do it anywhere. <laughs> cool, all right, so you get the idea. This is running on Wi-Fi, of course. Very easy to use and scroll and rotate. It's continues scrolling even after rotating. So that's awesome, captures your action and continues forward even after transition. Um, now, instead of going to YouTube to play a video, again, I have my own audio I composed here that I can do an audio test to get an idea of how good the speaker is. Because obviously the display is beautiful. I mean, at this resolution, pixel density, yeah. Uh, even if I tried to show you, it wouldn't show up too much in here anyways. So let's go ahead and open up a song I created. And uh, let's jack it all the way up. So you have about, it looks like about 10 to 15, uh, 15 audio levels for the volume. It's, it's not too bad. This is the loudest the phone goes and yeah, you'll notice, yeah, let's pause this. So right off the bat, you notice the lock screen. It doesn't give you audio controls, but it does give you something else, shortcuts to applications. That's another level of customizability we'll go over in one second. But in terms of the music, there's about 12 to 15 levels of audio adjustment, which is nice. So you can change the audio to your liking. It does have Dolby Digital virtual support, which means we plug in headphones, it makes the music sound better. It's a matter of interpretation. But again, you can't control the music when the phone is locked unless you have your own remote control. Uh, so that's good to note. The volume button works, but you can't pause or anything like that. So yeah, uh, audio volume itself is not the loudest. If you're at a bar setting, good luck. 
um, I'll, be, I'll be blunt. <laughs> um, but uh, if you're in a normal setting and you want to play video or something, uh, this song file itself is fairly loud, and this is a guitar here. And it sounds pretty good, especially if your hand is behind the phone, which just echoes it and amplifies it a bit. So yeah, uh, so back to that home screen customizability, which had just, there's so much stuff. We'll just go back to here. So we'll go to settings, go back to, uh, in this case, lock screen. And if you go to clocks and shortcuts, yep, yes you can. You can change what those icons do, but you can also change your clock to anything you want. So if you like looking at your phone when it's locked real quick to see what day it is, because damn it, you know, we've had those days where we just don't know what day of the week it is. Uh, there's the clocks, but look at that. You can choose as detailed or as simple as you want. Let's choose detailed. And we'll keep the shortcuts the way they are. Let's save. Great, done. So if we look at it now, you have your new clock with calendar and everything there. That's beautiful. And you can change what these icons do. In this case, camera, click to drag. So even though there's no physical button, you can still launch the camera, which if we do a quick test, It's about, yeah, it's about two seconds to launch. Not too bad. What's good to note is if you do have a pin or a password on this phone, you will not see these shortcut icons because you'll be having to enter your password. So yeah, just take a look at that though. It's so cool. You can customize it any way you want. That's the main feature of this device. It's powerful, it's badass, it's really good. And like if, when I did go online to download some games, in this case, I'm a huge fan of um, well, not Angry Birds, but Sector Strike. And that game, I just addicting as hell. But it was, there's a lot of scrolling action um, and it, it performed very well. Uh, obviously at these specs, I'd expect it to, but uh, you do have a large variety of games because you do have the Android Apple Store or <laughs> the Android uh, Application Store or Play Store. And uh, it worked without a hitch. So yeah, there's no shortage of games here in this case because it is Android and Jelly Bean in this case. And it was very nice to play around with it. Uh, yeah, overall, this phone really surprised me. Um, I went into it thinking, okay, Android device, let's see how it can be any different. The customizability on this thing is beyond what I could have expected. Um, and it goes a long way for a lot of people. The LG has officially or effectively tailored this phone to anybody. I mean, you want to play games? Well, duh, you can, you know, that's easy. You want an application? Well, yeah, you want to do Candy Crush? Fine, you want to go into uh, Twitter, well, obviously Twitter, but uh, <laughs> a point or any other application, it will support it, that's fine. But if you want to be able to customize it to make it the way you want it to be so that if you want to know when your next meeting is and you'll be able to see your calendar and see time and different time zones, or being able to change the way your transitions work, I mean, it's really cool. And uh, especially if you're a power user, they gave you the option to have that cool email tiled effect where you are two frame effects. So you actually have unread emails on the left and emails on the right. For some, they may not care. For people that get 50 to 100 emails a day, yeah, this is going to be a lifesaver. I know it saved my ass a few times. So yeah, uh, overall, very impressed, very powerful. Nothing, I can't really say much there. Battery life was medium good, great. Uh, <laughs> it depends on which I use it. I had this for about a week and a half, uh, just, just a little under two weeks. And on daily usage, I was about to get 20 percent left when I left for work from work sorry and I do have about nine hour shifts here so this guy uh, did deliver and then of course uh, the commute home killed it down to about five or ten percent but uh, that's fine I, I had the brightness at about 50 percent at the t you know so I like having everything beautiful when I'm using it uh, performance was great application support obviously is great and customizability is way up there so we have a winner here uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it feels good in the hand it's just the perfect size it's not too big it's not too heavy and it does look nice when you're holding it and you know what it could be a little misleading for some people they don't know what it is it's like oh is that an iPhone it's like nah man check this out yeah I got a clock there so yeah, hopefully you guys found this video interesting. Um, again, the key features to take away here, it has expandable memory, it's great, it has a lot of customizability, and for the things that it's supposed to do, it is a smartphone, it does them very well. Again, this is Elias Planinacos from Wireless Insider. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it in the comment section below. And if you want shortcuts to any part of this video, go ahead and take a look in the comments as well, and they'll be there, or the video description. And uh, yeah, until next time, take care.